I don't even know if I am ready to record. Like I was doing my prep and then I was like, you know what? We'll do it live. <laughs> I'm so tired. Uh, it's And it's like not sunny today. So <laughs> I don't have the sun to bring me energy. Anyway, hello. Hi. Welcome back to the bookcast my platform for sharing short fiction and updates on what I'm reading and writing. This is episode 51. And actually, coincidentally, as if anyone cares, the start of season four of the book cast, I started this uh, little venture as something to do with my time. I'm like, uh, I don't know what to do with my hands. And I saw other people like reading short fiction and talking about their process and uh, basically creating a spot for them to talk about themselves. And I was like, hey, I like talking about me. Let me try it. And here we are years later, episode four later, 51 episodes of me talking about me later. I actually kind of really like this. I I started back with the podcast regularly because I didn't want to write a newsletter. <laughs> Can you imagine like everything I talk about in a newsletter? I can't either. I'm not writing all that. So instead of like being cagey and brief in written words, because ain't nobody reading all that, I just decided to rev up the podcast and talk about it. I do still have a newsletter. You can join the newsletter at booksbydlwhite.com slash newsletter. But I typically I'm like only sending it out once a quarter or when I release a new book or there's something big, huge, exciting going on that I need everyone, you know, all 1100 people on my newsletter list to know about. I've been trying to let it grow organically. I'm just not a big newsletter gal. Even the ones that I get, I like I look at it and I scroll through it looking for anything awesome. Pick out a few things, buy books archive it. This is episode 51, start of season four of the bookcast. Happy to be here. I am D.L. White. Did I introduce myself? I'm D.L. White. I'm an author of 12 contemporary Southern and romantic fiction novels featuring Black men and women. I am also a big fan of books. So we usually begin with the book report, which is going to be the most haphazard you have ever seen a book report be. And we talk about the writing I'm not doing. I'm not currently writing a darn thing. I'm trying to plan a fan fiction story, but everything sounds boring to me. We'll talk about that uh, later. If you're new here or a seasoned listener, a bibliophile, or just looking for a good read, I hope you'll enjoy today's show. It's, it's always a circus. I am happy to have your ears for this time. I'm excited to share my love of reading and writing books with you. If you want to show your support for this podcast or for me as an author, please visit my support site at buymeacoffee.com slash books by DL White, where you can offer a one-time or recurring monthly gift. I so appreciate your support. The other way you can support is to buy my books. I, there's 12 of them. Well, there will be 12 of them. There are 11 and book 12 we'll talk about later is on the way. So books by dlwhite.com slash books has all of the good stuff, including this week's book, The Never List. This is a romantic comedy. I absolutely love this book. Let me tell you about it. Get ready for a slow burn romance that will make you laugh and swoon. In this delightful romantic comedy, Esme Whitaker is a successful single woman with a list of things she wants to accomplish before her next birthday. And one of them is to have sex. But the man she's interested in, Trey Pettigrew, is also the one who rubs her the wrong way. However, fate intervenes when Trey rescues Esme from an attack, and they're forced to, get, forced to work together on a business deal. Trey is determined to make up for his past behavior and win Esme's heart, but she's not interested in anything after hours. That is, until Trey discovers Esme's never list. As they navigate their conflicting priorities and undeniable attraction, they realize that sometimes life has its own plans. With relatable characters and witty dialogue, The Never List is a charming tale of two people who find love when they least expect it. I want to also issue a content advisory for this book. There is an attempted robbery and assault and references to the attempt and references to mental illness in this book. So uh, proceed with caution and maintain self-care 
I need to change one thing in here. So this morning when I pulled this book up to look at the blurb, I decided that it was boring and I kind of wanted to punch it up a little. And so I went through and did some edits, but I have a word in here that it doesn't belong. And so now because I saw something shiny, I am distracted and I have to go through and make changes on the fly. We're doing it live today, people. The Never List is, of course, available on my website. If you go to booksbydlwhite.com slash Never List, it has this book available in ebook and print. Select titles in my catalog are available in ebook, print, and audio directly from me at payhip.com slash books by DL White. This puts the monies directly into my pocket with virtually no middleman taking 30 to 70% of the retail price. But if you prefer to buy them retail, all of my titles are available in ebook wherever they're sold Amazon, Barnes and Noble Nook, Apple Books, Kobo Books, Google Play. They're also available in print at bookshop.org and resistbooksellers.com. I actually went to Resist and signed all of the stock that they had. So uh, I, I imagine if you buy it now, you'll probably get a signed copy. Um, they're also available via subscription sites like Script and Kobo Plus, and they're available to request at your local library. I love to hear that my books are added to circulation at your library and you're reading via Libby or Hoopla. And I love seeing my books on your shelves. So post those pics. Sometimes you can tag me, sometimes you can't, but I'll find it. I'll find it. Today, we will start with the book report as always. Then we'll talk a little bit about writing. I'm not doing much writing. I'm doing mostly thinking and planning. We'll talk about that. Today is Saturday, July 29th, 2023. It is 9.16 a.m. It is a gray day in Atlanta. I don't know if it's raining, but it's gray. I have a mic and I am ready to dig in. But first, and I really, really need this coffee. Okay. It's so hot. Hot. I need to make it like drinkable so I can take like a healthy swallow, but uh, it's so hot. I can only get a couple of sips in the time that I allot myself to like break, breathe, reset for the next segment, etc. So let's start with the book report because I am a book head. If I do anything, I'm going to read a book or listen to an audiobook. I have read Let's Roll On Over to the Goodreads Challenge. I have read 102 books of my challenge to read 150 books this year. I should take bets on whether I need to raise my challenge goal again. I recently raised it from 100 to 150 and I'm at 102. It's not even August. What do y'all think? I should put I should put up a poll somewhere. Typically, what I like to do is like aim for 100 or 150 and then see how far above that I can get because it's kind of funny to see like 152 over 100. Um, We'll see. I'm interested in where I end up this year. I'm writing more this year than usual. So typically, that means I would be reading less. But because I work at home by myself during the day and I'm either listening to podcasts or audiobooks, I'm not really missing out on reading time because I'm not writing while I'm at work, typically. I might edit while I'm at work, but not reading, writing while I'm at work. So I'm 17 books ahead of schedule. It is starting to slow down for me a bit, mostly because my brain is so tired from writing the book that I just can't, like, I can't really think. Uh, Nothing's really holding my attention. I definitely needed to switch genres. I was reading a lot of romance while I was writing the romance, and I'm basically very tired of romance right now. Um, Not that I'm not reading it, but I'm definitely reading um, other things more than I'm reading romance. But I'm still very much in the habit of reaching for some. if something sounds good, I'm just like reaching for it. 
I don't know where I left off. So um, I'm kind of just going to go through like I know I talked about Coffee Break. I think I talked about Coffee Break by Navy Winter. She's a new to me author. Um, I don't know. I uh, I don't know where I left off. So I'm I'm just looking through my list here, actually. A Wife for Sale, an Emerald City novella by Aubrey Penn. I, I really like Aubrey Penn's. Uh, I like her books. So I read her. Time Waster by Jessica Terry. I think this book, it's Mr. Time Waster by Jessica Terry. I think this book actually comes out on Tuesday. So um, preemptively, happy book launch day, book birthday to that book. Black Lace by Beverly Jenkins. Um, I did finish this book. This is a contemporary romantic suspense featuring his fineness, who is the mayor of a city, I think it's Detroit. I really like Bev Jenkins' historicals. Her contemporaries are okay, but I just really like her historicals. So I'm looking forward to getting back to the historicals. I listened to The Watcher Girl by Minka Kent. I really want myself to stop reading Minka Kent. Like in the past, her books were good, but like recently, I I just I'm reading it and I'm like, what is this? Like you can tell, like the the, the book just falls off a cliff. I'm reading it. I I can hardly remember what this book was about, but it just it got to a certain point. Where I was like, okay, okay, and then what? I really I want to stop reading Mika Kent. I think I think I'm done. I read Holding by Alexandria House. This is a new book in the St. Louis series. This is her hockey, black hockey romance players series. Um, It was heckin' good. Uh, It's brand new, so not a whole lot is out about it yet. Can't wait to talk about it. Really liked it. I listened to Save Your Breath by Melinda Lee. I'm really like trying to get into Melinda Lee and Kendra Elliott because both of them have a metric ton of thriller and uh, romantic suspense books out and I'm I'm like I'm trying to get into them because I just don't see black authors really digging into that uh, and the books are really hit or miss for me I read I tried a Kendra Elliott it just was not for me I think Melinda Lee might be more my speed I enjoyed this book but it's like book number six in a series and I'm not I'm not going to go back and read the first five because now I are now I know what happens <laughs> I managed to find a couple of Mary Burton books that I hadn't listened to. I think just maybe they just weren't out in audio before. Hide and Seek, which is a uh, criminal profiler number four, really enjoyed this one. Um, I actually just have had it going like I, I started and then I just keep going. I was doing laundry. I was doing dishes. I made myself a salad. It was just going, just walk around the house, listen to an audio book. My roommate's like, what are you listening to? Because it is like a... It is a it's it's a thriller suspense novel and um, somebody gets kidnapped and they're trying to find the kidnapper. And my roommate is like, what are you listening to? And I'm like, oh, it's a thriller. It's really good. She's like, oh, girl. So I turned it off for a second because I was like, OK, <laughs> read the room. <laughs> Tough crowd. So, um, yeah, so I had to go ahead and turn that off. So I finished that one on the 27th. So a couple days ago. Then I started I started a twisted love story by Samantha Downing. I I like Samantha's work. My lovely wife, her his lovely wife was a really good book. Um then I read For Your Own Good, which I really enjoyed. A couple of books in between there weren't really my bag. I'm trying to like a twisted love story. I'm 40% in and it's kind of getting interesting, but the first 40 percent this couple in this book now this is it's billed as a thriller i don't know that i would say thriller but it's more than a mystery more than a mystery not quite a thriller the timeline doesn't snap enough for me and the thing about a thriller is like there has to be fear for future instances like fear for future instances of of crime the impetus to solve the crime is that the killer will kill again whereas in a mystery the killer has killed and you're trying to figure out uh who the killer is that's to me that's the definition so it's more than a mystery and it's not as thrilling as some of your favorite thrillers it is uh, the writing is good i don't i just don't like these i don't like these characters like i don't care about them (laughs) they can go to jail for all i care it's it's just this couple that 
is in a really like twisted, toxic relationship, the break up and get back together and break up and get back together. But there's a, a secret from their past that they share. And the reason that they can't split up for good is because they have to continually make sure this secret stays covered. So yeah, so I'm 40% into a twisted love story. I have up next uh, by Miss Jenkins, Winds of the Storm. I think this is a historical. I'm looking super quick. It is a Levesque novel. I do think it is a historical. I don't know. I think it's a historical. So hopefully I will enjoy it. That's what I'm currently reading. I know I have a bunch of stuff in my Kindle Unlimited stack to read, but I just I haven't started them yet. I'm not writing anything. I am trying to plan a fan fiction story. I had an idea like I just finished writing a vacation romance. So I was like, oh, I could just keep going and just write a little fanfic. But like the further I get away from finishing Elysium, the less I want to do that. I know I'd want to write something short. I want it to be fun, but I just don't know. I was trying to have something written by the 8th, which is the start of the fan fiction challenge on the NSYNC Fiction Archive. But um, I don't think that's going to happen. I just told myself, just chill until August 1st and then see what comes to you. And hopefully I have something to post before the end of the challenge, which is August 31st. I may extend it to October 8th. I don't know, like, so it can run for a full month, but I don't know because we have also Poptober coming up, which begins on October 17th, which is Chris Kirkpatrick's birthday. So we do our challenges based around birthdays of the men of NSYNC, typically, um, except for like the holiday birthdays. Justin and Joey have birthdays two days apart in January. And typically we will do Secret Santa in December. So we don't do January challenges. But we'll see. I I don't know. We may we're not going to do Secret Santa this year. So maybe we'll do something in January. And then we do um, it's going to be May, which encompasses the anniversary of No Strings Attached. And Lance's birthday, which is May 4th. You know, lots of opportunities coming up to write things. I just haven't posted on the archive since 2021. And the stories I did for 2020 and 2021 were very short one shots, like maybe a thousand words. I would like to write something, but uh, I am also... I started up the patreon and we're in the discord and we're tossing our story ideas and um more than writing i just would like to provide a space for writers to talk and throw around ideas and support each other pump up their stories etc some of us haven't written in a while and it's nice to have the support of other writers while you're struggling through which is a thing i know because i am a member at word makers and that's what we do. Elysium is currently officially with the editor. I sent it over yesterday. Editor is very excited to get into it. She said she might even start like immediately, which is great. Um, I did my best to turn over a very clean copy. And I guess by clean, I mean no visible to me typos. I did a good read through. I actually put it into Vellum and got it all set up, you know, typeset, formatted, just so I could see like what it looks like. And then I sent it to my Kindle to read through and made my marks and updates and then went back and did my updates to the file, then exported that to Word and sent that updated Word document to my editor. So When I get it back, I can kind of just go through her comments one by one and update the vellum file, and we should hopefully have a nearly error-free novel that flows well, that doesn't drag, that isn't boring in parts, that doesn't have parts that don't make sense. So we'll see how long it takes. It's predicted to take about four weeks to edit, so... I could potentially be looking at having a release at the end of August or early September, which is on par for me. 
I will admit to normally not sending it through an official, a professional editor. Um, my beta is typically very good at pointing out more than she's contracted to point out. So spelling errors, things that don't make sense, along with her opinion of story flow, how the story goes. I also get like editor level comments from her. But I also feel like I need to level up with my work. And that means contracting an editor to make sure that the book is the best it can look. I also, I did my own cover for this book because I did not find a cover that I really wanted uh, enough that fit the motif of the book and the Black Diamond series. Uh, I like my um, self-created covers. So um, we're going to stick with those, but I did get a full wrap. I did update the cover for Beach Thing to match Elysium, and it will match the pearl coming after. And then I did a full wrap for Beach Thing. I'm waiting on the print proof of that to come in before I can advertise it. I think I mentioned that last week that I updated the cover for Beach Thing. The ebook cover has been updated and should be distributed um, amongst all the platforms. Um, but, but I think you have to delete and repurchase the book if you want the new cover. So unfortunately, or you can, you know, buy a new ebook copy of it from me at booksbydlwhite.com slash beach thing. So once the book is done, actually, I could have the full wrap cover done now, uh, since I know pretty much how long the book is going to be page wise. I should look that up because I don't honestly know by heart how many pages. Let me see. Print. It's going to be five by eight, just like Beach Thing. There are 224 pages in this book. I think Beach Thing is only like 158 pages or something like that. Beach Thing is 180 pages. I honestly wrote my tail off on Elysium. I just really, I really hope people enjoy it. I, I like it a lot. The more I read it, I've read it uh, many times now. I really like it. I think it turned out great. And I hope that readers like it as well. So book is with the editor. It'll take them three to four weeks to edit. Once I get it back, um, actually while it's being edited, I am prepping vellum. Um, I'm going to have the full wrap cover completed so that once it is, um, once it's done editing, I can uh, update the file in vellum and send it off to all of the places. So I'm just kind of thinking about how I'm going to distribute this book. It will first go to my paid subscribers and then it will hit my website store. So I am hoping to have the ebook available. I will not have print copies, but you can do a print pre-order. I think I can do a print pre-order, but you will see that that's the plan. The plan is to do ebook available immediately, a print pre-order. I can't do a simultaneous drop unless I wait for the books to be printed and shipped to me. It, I mean, uh, there's it's hard for an indie author to do a simultaneous drop unless the 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 pub the pub date is way way far off in the future and I don't I don't want to wait. <laughs> This book will never, this book will be, it'll be like a summer vacation romance that comes out in November. Website, it'll be on the ebook. This book will not be in audio anytime soon that I have to come out of cop, come out of pocket with audio and I, I don't have it. I just don't have it. And then it will hit retail stores, I don't know, probably two weeks later, depend on, depends on how long I can wait for that. Toying with not sending it through book funnel or having it available in ebook just as an EPUB that you can get from PayHip also through book funnel. So you will you'll get it both ways. So you can just sideload it if you know how. Cause I know a lot of people don't really like book funnel and there just isn't really a good way to deliver ebooks unless we do it through book funnel. If you know how to sideload, I can absolutely just have the ebook available. You can add it 
to your e-reader and read it that way, whichever on whichever app you like. But you won't be able to like make notes and highlights or anything until it's up on Kindle. That is the route that I plan to take. I do certainly hope to get a lot of sales from my website, having it available at the Books by D.L. White store first, and then it will roll through all of the retail sites. It'll probably be up at like Google Play almost immediately, and then it'll roll through the other sites. It'll probably be up at Amazon the quickest. It does take a while for books to distribute through draft to digital It will also be available on Kobo Plus. If you are a subscriber, it will not be available on Kindle Unlimited. But if you are a member of Kobo Plus, it's like Kindle Unlimited, except I don't have to be exclusive to Kobo. So you can borrow it, read it, return it. I get paid for time spent in the novel. I don't get paid by the page. I get paid for however long you spend in that book. That's how they guarantee that people aren't scamming the system. So if you read the book, uh, I get paid for that. It'll also be available at Scribd. Uh, It will eventually hit Scribd whenever they decide to put it up. So if you are a member at any of those sites, that's where it'll be sometime late August, early September. So I'm really, really looking forward to this book coming out. I think it's a really good book, but I I say that with every book because I'm very, I'm very proud of my work. I don't know what else to talk about. I don't have any appearances coming up, but I did, I was talking to Mo Flames at Indie Love and we might put a little something together. I want to do an event out at the Vibrary, which is like a, um, wine shop bookstore. I know there's an event coming up there that Word Makers is doing. I don't know if I'm going, but uh, Mo Flames and I were talking about doing a little joint project. And I'm wondering if maybe I can get my friend Nikki Blair to hop on. I don't know. That is not even yet in the works. We, we were just kind of talking about maybe doing something this fall. And I said I wanted to wait until I have this book out. And since it's coming, um, we'll see maybe what we can we can put together. I'm not interested in putting together a big multi-author event. I'm not that girl, but um, I would like to get out with the people and see, you know, see some people sling some books, hug some necks, etc. So we'll we'll see what pops up. I will be I am scheduled to be at the brunch tomorrow. This weekend is the Alexander House house party. Today is the big book event. I did not get tickets to that because um, it was just too it was just too expensive for me because I know me I will stand in a corner and be quiet and not talk to people and um, it was too much money for me to not socialize the way I feel like I would need to to get my money's worth. <laughs> I'm just tired, man. I'm so tired. Um, the I did I did buy tickets to the brunch. I do plan to be there, but I'm feeling very, I don't feel like going anywhere (laughs) lately. So if I show up, come find me. (laughs) I do plan to go though. I do, I do plan to go. Um, I'm, I'm sure it will be a great time. I'm just, I'm feeling very tired, antisocial. I don't feel like going anywhere lately. So this too shall pass. I think I'm just, I'm tired and I'm burnt. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I don't I don't know how authors go from book to book to book to book. Like maybe they if they stop, they know they won't get started again. And so they just keep going, because if I stop, I will most certainly stop for a while. But I also know I have I have my next book in the Potter Lake series on deck and we have a 20K in five days coming up in September which will kickstart that book for me. So I think my new process has been just take the longest, laziest break possible between books because we're going to do 20K in five days once a quarter. And that is the start of the next book for me. I get like a good, you know, 19, 18, 20K into a book. And um, I well, I have to get a head start, which I have. And then I spend five days like deep in the world and then use that as a jumping off point to finish the book. I think that has to be my my next process. Otherwise, books don't 
get written. I'm, I'm not a person that gets in this chair every day and writes a thousand words and then goes about my day. Uh, I'm, I have, a, I have a concentrated amount of time where I write and then I have to put it down and step away and get back into books and all that. I can't think of anything else that I need to share. I was thinking this might be a short episode, but of course it's not. It's it's not ever a short episode. I can yammer for 30 straight minutes if I t- I'm talking about me. That brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the bookcast. I'll be back next week with a reading update, perhaps a writing update. I don't know. Will I start writing that fan fiction story or will I not? I'm, I'm, my bets are on not, but we'll see. Please enjoy the weekend. Have a superlative week and we will chat again next weekend. Bye bye. Thank you.